and almost <coughs> make hermits of themselves but justify it because they have some extraordinary faith toward God. It's just not good enough. It's not how it works. And loving your neighbor as yourself, it's not easy. It really isn't. It's, it's hard. It's hard to do that. It's hard to find a way in which you can um, just naturally continue to do it in a way that's right and wholesome. I can't do it. I'll tell you right now, I can't even love myself. I can't even love my wife properly. I'll be honest with you, we, my wife and I, we, we go for counselling to make sure that our marriage stays intact. There, that might shock some of you, because by nature, my sinful nature will do everything it can to try and destroy. Now you say, how can that happen, um, Dr. Morrison, if you're a theologist and all this other stuff that you're supposed to be? I'll tell you how it happens, because I'm transparent about my weaknesses. <coughs> and if I'm not transparent about my weaknesses, which is what I was speaking about before, then I'm not going to be able to be helped. And one of the beauties of loving your neighbour as yourself and all the rest of it and love does no harm to a neighbour therefore loves the fulfilment of the law is knowing that the right people can help you in your weaknesses as well. Now that note may not be for all of you but I'm at that point in my life where I'm tired of thinking I know everything and are capable of everything. I want to sit down and be examined. I want to sit down and be mentored. I want to sit down and be able to explain that I, you know, I don't know why I treated the wife like this, or I don't know why I reacted like that on this particular issue, and show my wife and others, mainly my wife, that I don't know everything, that I'm not capable of everything but I am trying and I'm putting my hand up and asking for help oh but you have the Holy yes I have the Holy Spirit and all that but I still fail and I'm not just trying to focus on me I'm just using myself and as an example I still fail <clears throat> so we go and I go for counseling as a way of showing I care, despite my weaknesses as well. Now, I'm not saying that's for everyone. I'm just saying that's where I'm at in my life because it matters to me how I treat people. And sometimes I just don't interpret things <coughs> the right way. Now, if you can't see this smoke, wow. I'm going to keep going though. So I hope that little bit of insight helps. Loving the, your neighbour as yourself is, and the measure of that is far more an indicator of the condition of your Christianity than what loving the Lord your God and all this other stuff with you is because that doesn't qualify anymore. The new commandment was and still is given by the Lord Jesus Christ himself to love your neighbour as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin. So, <coughs> I'd say not commit sin, you have sin. So the fruit, one of the fruits of sin in Christianity is showing partiality. And again, as I explained earlier, this is a normal... <coughs> result of human nature fallen human nature and again you find it that it's 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 just abundant in family churches and he says you've committed sin are convicted by the law as transgressors now what law this is where we've got to be careful not the mosaic law 
the royal law of liberty that you should love your neighbor as yourself so you've got to be careful not to fall back into the trap of thinking that you're under the law this is about the law that the lord give that you are to love your neighbor as yourself so be very careful because when you read that you're a transgressor of the law subconsciously you might go into the thought that well this is because of the mosaic law no it's because of the new commandment which the lord has given us that's what it's about whoever shall keep the whole law yet stumble in one point he is guilty of all and i think james mentions that in saying don't think that you're under the mosaic law that's not what he's talking about he's talking about the royal law of liberty if you're going to put yourself under the law don't be foolish you've got to keep the whole law impossible if you put yourself under the mosaic law and miss one bit then you're guilty of the whole law so why bother why put yourself there in the first place um, the apostles saying can you see that we mumble jumble up the old testament with the new testament and it's destructive it is so destructive <clears throat> now you won't believe this but there's a man smoking here with all this smoke catastrophic conditions How you going? Well, nice yeah, wouldn't it be good if I got hit by a shark or something? To get... Mate, I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm wa I'm ready. <laughs> They're out here. Good on you guys. So you can see that the mumble jumble of the law a couple of rough tradies back there can get mixed up with Christianity and the danger of that again is the arousal and um, production of sin that's what it does it arouses our sinful nature to produce sin but he says for he who said do not commit adultery also said do not murder now if you do not commit adultery but you do murder you have become a transgressor of the law now i find this interesting because james knows we're not under the law but what he's saying is stay away from it because it doesn't matter if you're doing one and not the other <clears throat> you're under the judgment of the thing and the <laughs> Oh my gosh, you know, this mosaic law has become a pest to Christianity. I don't want to offend anyone, but it's become an absolute pest to Christianity. Oh goodness me. Look at these scenes here today, viewers. And it needs to go. So speak and do so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty so he's saying you've got to put this mosaic law behind you and just apply yourself to the royal law of liberty that's what you need to do and the royal law of liberty is critical for judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy that's what the mosaic law did it only left people in a position where mercy wasn't possible because nobody could keep it i try and gee i try and make it simple but it's so complex isn't it nobody could keep the law therefore mercy was never going to be obtained it was an impossible impossible expectation from the law the law was a ministry of sin and death why do we mumble jumble it up with the freedom and liberty that comes in knowing christ 
the danger associated with bringing war into the realm of the Holy Spirit through in the Christianity. You can find more about that on in Romans 7. So while no mercy will be shown under the law, with Christianity, mercy triumphs over judgment. So while judgment triumphs over mercy under the law, in Christianity, mercy triumphs over judgment. That's the difference. That's the two differences. I'll say it again. On the one hand, judgment triumphs over mercy under the law. On the other hand, mercy triumphs over judgment within Christianity. And that's all there is to it. Now we've got this. Oh no, come on. Now, this is the reason why I've done this epistle. Faith without works is dead. Now, this is the great legalist passage. The legalists love this, but look at the context. What faith is James talking about? James is talking about loving your neighbor as yourself, which encompasses all evangelism, all of these Christian works, was for humaneness. It's about you being humane. It's not about loving the Lord your God with all your mind. Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like. Um, maybe even comment. If you watched it on Facebook, like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one of life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.